Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 30th of December, 2018. This is our last message for the year, and uh, so we're talking about the pillars of the church. I remember in a church that I was sent to as a young child, uh, there were people who were referred to as the pillars of the church, and uh, they were a group of older uh, people in the church that uh, I think people felt if those people didn't show up, the place was going to fall down. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about something else. And so just be patient with me and let me share with you some of this. Um, this is not heaven. I think we all know that. But we're here for a while to labor and serve the Lord. And the Apostle Paul, you know, talking about this and, you know, why didn't he, you know, just go and be with the Lord? Uh, gave this reasoning in Philippians 1, 24 through 25. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. You know, he's saying, why, why not just depart and be with the Lord? He is convinced of this. I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. And did you ever think that part of your reason for being here was to be able to be someone who uh, gives somebody uh, joy in their faith? You know, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we have this opportunity uh, to be that person to, to people that are around us. You know, that we are an encouragement. Uh, we're there to help people to progress and grow. But we're also there to bring joy uh, to the faith, their, their exercise of faith. If we're going to be here, we're going to have to live somewhere, okay? And, uh, you know, I grew up in Buffalo and I live in Rochester. But that's not the, the, what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is, like, you know, spiritually, where's your home? You know, where are you from spiritually? And um, <clears throat> we should live, I believe, as much as possible in, in God's house. Now, you might think, oh, pastor putting an arm on us to get us to come to church more often. Well, okay, fine. I'm putting the arm on you. Come to church more often. I'm not ashamed of that at all. But, uh, but you have to understand that uh, when we talk about being in God's house, uh, there's a sense of this in which you are, we are God's house. All right? When we gather, we're God's house. Uh, when we're alone, we're God's house. All right, so um, Hebrews 3, 6 says, But Christ was faithful as a son over his house. And uh, the comparison is being made here to Moses, who was faithful over his house. Moses was the servant of God. Jesus, the son of God. All right, he said, So he was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence uh, and the boast of our hope firm until the end. And that, that uh, holding fast our confidence, it's our out outspokenness, our unabashed, unashamed, uh, very open uh, willingness and ability to just speak up for what we believe and uh, for you know and to be the person we are in ways that are just obvious to other people. You know, God's house has one foundation, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 9 through 13 says, We are God's fellow workers. Just think of that. You're God's fellow worker. God's trying to accomplish something. He's invited you alongside to help in the work. You are God's field. You're the place where God grows produce. The fruit of the Spirit grows in you, as pointed out to us by someone visiting our church this morning. You are God's building. Okay, You are God's building. You are God's house here. All right, According to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation. And that foundation, of course, is Jesus. He's going to go on and tell us that. And another is building on this foundation, but each man must be careful how he builds on it. For no man can lay any foundation other than the one which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know, we are tempted often uh, to set new foundations, other foundations for our life. You know, pleasing ourselves, accomplishing this or that, you know, accumulating things. You know, but, but the foundation to, you know, to have the real life. I mean, Jesus is the right way, the truth, and the life, okay? To have this life uh, is to let Christ be laid as the foundation in our lives and then to whatever we build in life we build on that foundation and uh, to make that easy to apply you know what are you doing you know with your life that is for Christ that is in other words, on that foundation for his purpose in your life now if any man builds on that foundation it, it goes on to talk about the the gold the silver the precious stones wood hay and straw it says that everybody's work will become evident or obvious and uh, the, this, the day, this day when, when the Lord returns, will try us. And, uh, and the, what we did will be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. All right? 
going to move on. The apostles and prophets and the importance of them, you know, for us being the house of God. You know, it's Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 says this, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being uh, the cornerstone. Uh, in whom the whole building being fitly joined together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord and you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So it's not just me individually, it's us together. There's things God is accomplishing when we're together uh, that can't be accomplished when we're alone. All right, so to gather as God's house, to gather in God's house, uh, and to function together, work together, live together as God's house is very important. And so let's do the practical outworking, the Word, Prayer, worship, and fellowship. This is what the this gathering is about. This is what the house is about. Uh, Luke 6, uh, 46 and four, through 49. I'll just take the salient part of this. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep, laid a foundation on the rock, and when the flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Okay, and so to understand, house of God, uh, you need God's word, all right? You need, you know, the, both of the person, you know, Jesus is, is the word of God, but then also that written word is important for us to have. There's a man out on the internet named Jess Connell. I don't know him, uh, but he said this about the Bible. It is flawless. And he's, he's, of course, you know, supported by scripture on each one of these points. It teaches you. It is God-given. It is alive and active. It is able to build you up. It equips the man of God. It trains us to know what is right. It brings correction and reproof when needed. Uh-oh. Okay, rightly discerns your thoughts and intentions and quickly sorts out who is a true believer and who just wants to hear things that please them. All right, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 3 says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Okay, for the time will come when they won't endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. I think we're hitting the time like that right now in America. Prayer. Uh, Isaiah 56, 7 says, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. And by all the peoples, he was referencing not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And Jesus, of course, complained that they had turned that, uh, that, that court of the Gentiles into a marketplace and, and really prevented uh, you know, the peoples from being able to draw near to that house. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 17 just says simply this, Pray without ceasing. All right? Then worship, worship is one of the pillars of this of this house of God. All right, the true worshipers uh, will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. He said this in response to uh, people wanting a locale. Where's the locale? Where are we supposed to go to uh, to do this worshiping? And he says, look in spirit and in truth. You know that's where the worship occurs in God's house. And then finally, fellowship, probably one of the the least uh, understood parts of all this that they were continually devoting themselves in Acts 2.42 uh, to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And very simply, uh, just to, to, to kind of flesh this all out, our coming together is the house of God. Uh, the, this word koinonia, and I pulled this out of Wikipedia, which has got a project going on right now to improve the Christian content on Wikipedia. Very proud of them for, for taking that step. It says koinonia is a transliterated form of the Greek word, and it, and it gives it there, which means communion. Okay, so now there's this thing where we come together and we, or we have this communal sharing uh, uh, amongst us, Lord, and, uh, and then joint participation, the share which anyone has in anything. So there's this, this sense of being a part of something, but also having a share in it, okay? And uh, it's participation, a, a gift jointly contributed. So now there's this idea of coming together to accomplish this, a collection, a contribution, it identifies the idealized state of fellowship and unity that should exist within the Christian church, the body of Christ. And so take those things into consideration as you live your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ and as you're endeavoring to, to live out this, this be in the house of God, a place where people can draw near to you uh, and sense the presence of God and sense the blessing of God. And so I'm going to say a couple things to you. Happy New Year. And uh, God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the 10-Minute Video Summary.